We are looking at uh, the Spring security support uh, in Spring Boot 3.4. I wrote a blog, uh, I'm a big fan. There's a lot of really cool stuff in the release notes, okay? There are, there's just a ton of stuff here uh, in the release notes. Let's go through some of them. First and foremost, you need to be paying attention to the deprecations. Obviously, uh, this is Spring Boot uh, 6.4 and Spring Boot 3. That four. Spring Security 6.4, Spring Boot 3.4, but we are marching towards Spring Framework 7 and Spring Boot 4.0, at which point these deprecations, which are mildly annoying underlines uh, at the moment, will be, uh, will be you know, full-on deprecations, they'll be gone, right? So you need to care about that, right? You need to start caring about this stuff sooner rather than later. And uh, so as a result, you know, just pay attention to this section, right? Okay, uh, and by the way, there's even a section here, preparing for 7.0, uh, and uh, I know it's coming out, I think it's coming out next year, right? But uh, do keep in mind the things that you need to like be aware of. The DSL has been changed a little bit, so you need to be uh, aware to use the Lambda derivatives, not the fluid DSL that was there before. Uh, the LDAP support is uh, gonna be changed uh, uh, instead of using uh, Apache DSS, use Unbound ID. I don't know what that means. I'm sure it's, it's important, but either way, care about it, right? Okay, let's go back to what's new 6.4. So besides the deprecations, um, I'll leave you to the, read all this stuff. There are <laughs> these two innocuous sections, and this is a lie, by the way. This is, I think, actually borderline criminal. It's just ridiculous how how big these features are, and yet they just get this one little, like, blink and you'll miss it a sentence, right? This is, this is truly, two the, these two features, pass keys and one-time token login, we're gonna look at in a minute, okay? We'll come back to them. Uh, what else? We got method security. So uh, the annotations in Spring Security are now better Spring Framework citizens. They they play well with Spring Framework's alias four. They can be meta annotations now. Uh, they are. There's even a scanner you can use to discover security related annotations on the you know present on a on a class. So it's just a just a better component model story. You know you probably won't even notice it, but if you do, it's there. Uh, some OAuth two improvements. Then you know some fluid builder DSL methods got added. For example, OAuth two login now has login page in the uh, DSL for reactive. OIDC back channel support now supports logout uh, plus JWT. So basically this is, um, how do you log out across a bunch of federated services? This is the, there's a protocol called OIDC back channel, uh, which we added, I think in spring spring security 6.2 a year ago. And uh, we've now, we now support a different kind of token with a different kind of content type, great. We've got the ability to send authenticated requests with the REST client, not just the REST template. There's an inter interceptor there that you can use. There's a, you know just a bunch of cool stuff here. Um, we can opt in to declarative REST client support by registering these beans, right? Uh, these OAuth2 uh, access token re response client for authorization, uh, grant, code grant requests for author or refresh tokens for client credentials grant requests for Jot bearer grant requests and uh, token exchange grant requests. So all these different things. We also have uh, refresh tokens when we do token exchange. A bunch of stuff for uh, SAML about which I know very little, so I'll just kind of moving on. Uh, and uh, we've got now uh, CSR, CSRF breach support, which is a, a bit of a standard that's nice, more consistent. Remember me cookie support is now more customizable. Uh, we can flag and then uh, invalidate invalid configurations more readily now with the uh, security filter chain. Observability, you can be more granular. You can you can opt in to observability through micrometer in authentic authentication, authorization, and observations uh, separately, so that's nice. You have Kotlin support and ACL support. By the way, this is role hierarchy. This is not this is not new uh, in Spring uh, Security 6.4, but it's super duper nice. Now, ro role hierarchy, let me see if I can find the uh, type here, role hierarchy, is a class that lets you define as a string how a, a role relates one to another. So you can say admin is greater than user, which is greater than unauthenticated, for example, right? Uh, it's literally just a string. You, you pass in the string and Spring Security reads that and uh, does with it what it needs to, to to make things work. So let's go ahead and take a look at now a simple secure application. Now this application, I uh, I went to start.spring.io, I added Spring Boot Starter Web, I added Spring Security, um, and that's it. And I also added manually uh, Web Authn, okay? Actually, I wonder if this, this is not even managed, right? This is not managed by Spring, Spring, uh, Spring Boot or Spring Security. So I had to specify a version. Uh, but I'm using web authn. This is the name of the protocol uh, that backs the implementation, what vendors are calling pass keys. So if you go to Google or if you go to uh, GitHub or Apple Technologies, they all talk about pass keys, right? And uh, pass keys themselves are part of uh, the FIDO Alliance. So if we go to FIDO Alliance, 
you can see that this is a consortium that is looking to help people uh, adopt pass keys, right? And there are a lot of members. So if you look at the membership uh, of this, you can see, you know, one password, Amazon, Amazon, American Express, Apple, uh, Bank of America, Cisco, CVS, Google, Dell, um, Intel, Intuit, tax preparation software in, here in the States, LastPass, NTT Docomo, Knock Knock, uh, you know, PayPal, uh, RSA, right? Like um, Visa, US Bank. I mean, these are Wells Fargo, that's another bank, Ubicode, they make the Ubi keys, TikTok. These are all vendors that have a lot to lose when things are not secure, and they are all in on this, uh, this, uh, specification, and um, and uh, it's well supported. I mean, you can already use it now in the wild, and now with this release, you can add it to your application. So let's take a look at how, okay? Uh, I've got a, a couple of users. Obviously, you're not gonna use hard-coded usernames and passwords in your production application, okay? Don't be a dope, don't do this. This is just for our demo. I've got two users, Josh and Rob. Josh has the admin called, uh, has the role called user. This one has the user and the admin roles, okay? Uh, and uh, that's it, you're gonna talk to, a, you're gonna have your passwords, uh, presumably not at all, if you're gonna, you know, better to avoid passwords, but if you're gonna have them, store them, you know, encoded in a one-way hash, uh, in the in a, in in a data store or something like that, you know. So never at rest uh, in plain text. Um, and uh, and then we configure regular Spring Security filter chain. We're telling Spring Security uh, how we want to authorize requests. We're saying all requests to forward slash admin must be uh, must have the role admin. Everything else must be authenticated. So everything must be authenticated, but admin requires elevated privileges. That's for this very trivial HTTP controller that I built. Forward slash returns a response of you know, the, the user and then the name as the attribute or the value of that attribute. And um, you can only get here if you are authenticated uh, as some kind of user. You can just be a regular user or you can be admin, but you can't get this if you're not authenticated somehow. You can only get this if you're authenticated as an admin user. That's what this configuration here is all about, okay? Great, and then we get the web authn stuff. This is the, the new stuff, right? So here we're saying that uh, we are uh, uh, allowing the requests for this origin. This is a unique key, this is arbitrary, this can be whatever you want it to be, but this has to correspond uh, to your host, I think, right? Um, okay, let's try it out. So we go to our browser, okay? And we're going to, to Safari, yeah? Go to 127, I guess we could go to localhost, 8080. And we're gonna go to forward slash. Oh, I'm already logged in. Let me log into an incognito uh, browser window there. Localhost, 8080, forward slash. Okay, now I'm not logged in right now. I'm gonna log in one time as Rob. Okay, I'm logged in. And now I'm gonna go to web auth n forward slash register. Okay, and it's gonna ask me to register this device. And I'm gonna, and remember I'm on a Mac here. Uh, and so this pass key is managed as part of my operating system, right? You can actually see I have this uh, passwords app here. And if I log in, and I go to pass keys, you know, there's nothing there right now, right? And then I click on register. It's gonna ask me to create a pass key. Now, if I have my laptop open, and right now it's in clamshell mode, it's locked, so I've just got my device, but I'm already in my operating system. So it's gonna ask me to create a, a pass key. If my laptop was open, it would ask me for touch ID. If I did this on the phone, it would ask me for face ID. But right now, since I can't do either of those, since my laptop is closed, Mac OS knows that I'm at least who I am because I'm, able to access the operating system. So it's gonna create the uh, pass key for me. But normally you'd back that based on the, uh, the uh, cryptography uh, uh, assumed by, by using uh, your face ID or your touch ID or whatever. And the, you could also set up a pass key based on some external thing, right? You can actually uh, specify that as well. So let's say I wanted to do another, right? I can hit register. If I had more than one device that could provide a pass key, I could use, for example, an external one. I could use iPhone. I could say, save a, a pass key on a device with a camera. So there's all sorts of different options here. I chose the one that saves to my iCloud managed password manager, okay? Um, it's, it's registered there. Yeah, it failed, thank you. I know, I, I canceled out of it. Now let's go back to uh, the root of our application. I'm gonna close the incognito browser, open up another one, paste uh, just forward slash, hit enter. I'm gonna choose login with pass keys, okay? It's gonna ask me if I wanna log in. This is an operating system modal, by the way. Okay, there you go, I'm logged in. And again, if I was on a, if I was on my laptop without being plugged into a monitor, it would ask me to do touch ID. If I was on my phone, it would ask me to do my face ID. The point is, I am getting logged in based on Mac OS's awareness of me, 
right? This requires deep integration, both in the browsers, by the way, all of them support it. I'm using Safari on Mac OS, but this works just fine in Firefox, in Google Chrome. I think even Edge supports it. I mean, it's everywhere, right? It's ubiquitous as can be. It works on all operating systems too. It's not just Mac. Um, it works, you can also use it. You can also have these pass keys stored in your like LastPass, for example, if you're using LastPass, they support it, for example. So it's not just an, I, I'm supporting it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm right now using an iCloud keychain. And so it's federated across all my Apple devices. I can, I can go to my phone and access it with the same iCloud account as I did on my laptop, right? Um, but if you want, you can do, uh, you can store the passkey in like LastPass and then presumably, as long as you have LastPass accessed, uh, then you can, you can log in, right? So that's all supported now out of the box. Super cool, huh? Like this is the future. You can build web apps where people can log in via their face. Now remember, you can go a step further than this. I mean, think about the implications. Everything I'm gonna show you right now uh, is in this Spring security application. And this application has its ident identity of users and we registered passkeys. But what if we also added one more line and we set up the uh, Spring authorization server? That is to say, we made this an OAuth compliant authorization server, right? An IDP. Well, that means that now you could visit a public facing website. You know, you could have a Spring Cloud Gateway, which is acting as an OAuth client that has a filter. That filter redirects back to this OAuth IDP. And now users can show their face or you know, use their touch ID or whatever, and then they get redirected back to the website and they're now able to pass a token along from the front end website to back end microservices, all with just the power of your, your touch ID, right? Now, now you've got federated identity backed by this, this, uh, this uh, web pass, web, web, web auth end based pass key initiative. Pretty cool, huh? The next way to avoid, and by the way, if I log into this, there's this uh, pass key that I created today. And of course you should be sure to delete it if you're not using it. Uh, the next next um, technology that we have here that you can use to avoid passwords, right? Because remember, the best password is no password, is a one-time token login. So the way this works is um, you configure this, you configure a Lambda, a token generation success handler. Here's for the request, here's for the response, and here's a one-time token object that gets passed in. That one-time token object, you can, you can dereference a token value, which is a string. And you would send this out of band in another context. You'd send this, you know, you, I'm not gonna do it here, but I'm just printing it out in the console and asking the user to click the link. But you can imagine using Twilio or SendGrid or something, right? Um, and sending them a text message or an email uh, that they would then click. So if you, if they have access to the user's email that they've registered with you, so, you know, one assumes therefore that they've got that locked down, right? If they're able to access their Gmail, that will have plenty of layers of protection and only they with their credentials should be able to access it, right? So you can, you can defer to that authentication mechanism. So here you're sending them a text message uh, and uh, just printing it out and you wait for the response. So let's go ahead and try this. Now going back to our browser, we close this and open up another incognito. Uh, I'll go to uh, localhost 8080 forward slash and I'm gonna do a one-time token. I'm gonna ask for Josh, send a token. Okay, it says you've got console mail. You can do whatever you want there. I'm gonna to go to the command line here on the console and I've got this response, right? Copy and paste this, put that in the URL and it, it says, please input the token, done. And now there we are, I'm logged in as Josh. Really, really powerful stuff. So this is super really, so this is really, really powerful. Um, and as always, my friends, uh, there's a lot more besides this, but I hope you'll check out the latest and greatest in Spring Security 6.4 available in Spring Boot. Uh, 3.4.